you join me in the air bar, DUSA University of Dundee. Here, very soon, the first student climate change conference in Dundee will take place. Seeing as climate change is gathering more and more attention lately, DUSA decided to jump on the bandwagon and organize their own conference. After COP26, DUSA's Student Climate Change Conference. The only thing missing really are the world leaders. And they're the ones missing out, not us. In two hours, six speakers, agriculture, the Tay, NHS, Russia. A lot is going to be talked about in this student conference. Let's change the climate. Oh, wait. And so the conference began. Firstly, we had a talk by John Rowan, who's the Vice Principal of Research, Knowledge Exchange and Wider Impact of the University, and his talk was titled University Action Plan. In it, John explained how the University is at the forefront in some of the areas of tackling climate change. For example, we've had a gas-based energy central since the 1960s, but we're a bit behind in some other areas. For example, plenty of universities have achieved net zero and we're not quite there yet. He also explained how the university has a long-term plan which includes the students and how the university hopes that through this working group, through this action plan, we will achieve net zero and become a very, very environmentally friendly university. Abigyan Kagaria came on to talk about public transport in the UK. He's a student of the MSc in Sustainability, specializing in climate change and the green economy. We actually had a chance to speak to him after his talk. Here's what he had to say. Well, um, I'm Gyan. Uh, I'm studying sustainability and climate change at the University of Dundee. And I presented, uh, spoke about public transport in the UK and how it is quite flawed because there's no incentive for people to use our public transport over their own car or maybe you know, travel domestically, they'd rather prefer taking a flight than take the train or the bus. So that's the point I wanted to highlight and bring about. Just to delve a bit into what else Abigyan talked about, he mentioned how there's some interesting stats about the cost of different modes of transport in the UK and the different impact of those different modes on the environment. And he's also mentioned some of the initiatives that are being done in Scotland and the UK to tackle this issue. Following Abigail, Kira Samet came on to talk about the Tay as a sustainable energy source. Kira is a fourth year student of the BSc in Environmental Science and we actually had a chance to speak to her after her talk. Here's what she had to say. I'm Kira, I'm in my fourth year of environmental science and today I talked about my dissertation. So for it I've been looking at using the Tate estuary as a source of sustainable energy and how this can be done in a way that has minimal impact on humans and on the environment. Just to give you a few more details into Kira's fascinating talk, she mentioned how we could install tidal kites, tidal turbines and heat pumps in the Tay to harvest its energy potential. These would produce considerable amounts of energy without affecting wildlife or the locals, so these are options that we could and should consider. Next, it was Alap Azrolakar's turn to come on. He is a fifth year medicine student and he came to talk about how students can reduce their carbon footprint when using NHS services. His talk focused on three main points. Firstly, on how the mode of transportation we choose when using NHS services is very important and how we should opt to walk or take public transport rather than taking our own cars. Secondly, how the rise in telemedicine will be good for the environment because it means we won't have to go to the NHS sites. And finally, how we need to dispose of medicines appropriately by taking them to pharmacies rather than, for example, flushing them down the toilet because that has a very negative impact on aquatic wildlife. We moved on to our penultimate speaker, Kate Adams, who is the Environment and Land Use Advisor for England's National Farmers Union, Northeast, and her talk was titled Working with the Agriculture Sector to Achieve Net Zero. She mentioned how it's in the interests of farmers to combat climate change and how they must be included in this debate. She also mentioned how we must start having conversations about climate change with farmers in order for them to change the way they farm and also inform them of the small manageable things they can do to change and help the climate. And finally, she also mentioned how it's important 
that the local communities and the people close to farmers start talking to them about these issues because these are the people most likely and communities most likely to change their minds and make a real difference. Finally, Tom Bennett joined us to deliver his talk. He is studying for a Renewable Energy Development Masters in Area to Watch University and he joined via Teams from Orkney. His talk was titled Worse's Impact on the Energy Crisis and in it Tom explained how the UK and the West in general are very dependent on Russia for energy and how we can move forward to reduce our dependence on Russia for energy. Mainly we could activate emergency power sources that some countries possess the issue is most of these sources are coal based. We could form trade agreements with other countries, like Boris Johnson is currently attempting with Saudi Arabia, but we all know that that regime is not very advisable either. And finally, we could resort to renewable energy sources, but this would take a very long time. We managed to get short interviews with Samantha Macalini and Maitane Perez, two of the people behind this conference, about how they thought the conference went and the planning that went behind it. Um, I'm Samantha and I'm the Vice President of Representation here at DUSA and today we just hosted our first student <laughs> climate conference. The idea came um, from one of my SRC counsellors who wanted to put this together and we got a group of us and we um, planned for months to kind of put this together and we're really happy to see the event take place today. Um, it was a real passion project for me as when I ran for this position one of my manifesto points was to help DUSA and the university become more sustainable in all their practices and become more environmentally aware. So doing this today has been a real um, step forward in that manifesto commitment for me and I'm really happy to see it all come together. Uh, hi, I'm Mike Bennett, the SRC Environment and Sustainability Rep. Um, and this idea came up because there is such great work being done by the university and especially by the students and it needs to be voiced and this was a first step. Uh, hopefully this will keep going over the years and get bigger, the work will spread around. Um, yeah. With that, the talks were over and the audience, who showed up in respectable numbers, slowly drifted away. Alas, the conference is over. As the poor fella in charge of live streaming, that's me, slowly packs away, the only thing that remains are the thoughts left by the conference. Overall, a very interesting conference, a lot of variety, a lot of different points of view and a lot of different fields of, of research and science represented and very very interesting and thought-provoking talks. As we've heard from the participants, this is something that doesn't end here. The goal is to, every year, have this student climate conference happen again and again. And from my point of view, this is something that's desirable. This is something that we should aim uh, for, because it is a, a very interesting climate conference. Only the first one, um, only six speakers. Hopefully in the future we'll have more people speaking, we'll have more fields of science represented and more interesting climate conferences. That's all for me, thank you very much.